Welcome everyone to the first week of the AAF simulated and today we've got an AAF West matchup between the San Diego fleet and the San Antonio commanders this is bound to be a good rivalry here in the West division we are super excited to see how it plays out here in week one between these two teams we really don't know much about either squad right now but let's look at San Antonio these fans are raring to go in the Alamo Dome they're pumped and so are we a new era of football has arrived with the AAF simulated and man just cannot be more excited to see how this matchup plays out between the two teams San Diego they've got a really stout looking defense but San Antonio their offense you've got Logan Woodside at starting quarterback you've got Kenneth Farrow Mikhail McKay some big names San Diego has some big names of their own Cameron Kelly is gonna be a guy to watch on that defense but yeah, we are just super excited to get this show on the road here in San Antonio between these two really good-looking teams. We're excited. We had a great game between Orlando and Atlanta just a couple days ago. Orlando started off with a bang, 30-9 win, but Atlanta didn't look half bad, especially their offense. They just needed to find a way to score. They'll actually be playing San Diego next week so that'll be interesting and san antonio will be playing orlando in the following week as well so interesting stuff but nick rose is gonna kick it away san diego will receive coming out of the end zone that's brian brown the wide receiver and he'll take it up to the 33 a great return and the fleet have excellent starting field position for mike berkovici and his squad so the former arizona state University alumni Mike Berkovici. It's gonna be interesting to see how he plays. This guy really wants to prove himself and he's getting the opportunity to do so here in the AAF simulated. Should be a good game. Let's see what happens here on the first play. Jaquan Gardner gets the carry and he's met right away. That commander defense was all over him. Excellent job defensively. Let's look, take a quick look right now at the Fleet's offense. Offensive line, it's going to be interesting to see how they how they play. Really can't really estimate what they're going to be like because you never know until you're in the season. But uh, Jaquan Gardner, Terrell, Terrell Watson, a couple great backs. And then Nelson Spruce, he's going to be a guy that you want to watch offensively. This guy, he can ball. He was on the LA Rams, got injured, trying to find his way back now in the Alliance. Dantes Ford, also another name. Second and eight now. See what the fleet can do. Berkovici will throw. He's got lots of time. He's going to go to the outside. And that's complete. First down. That's Nelson Spruce. So San Diego able to pick up a first down. And now they're at the 45. Getting close to midfield. Um, something we want to touch on here. It's going to be really neat to see how these offenses pull it together. Mike Marks is the head coach of San Diego. He just needs no introduction. Very well-known coach. And I'm sure he'll do a great job here in San Diego. Off play action. Bergovici rolling out. Deep across the middle. Wide open man. That's Marcus Bow, The tight end. So Bergovici with a couple nice throws in a row. And San Diego already has it in San Antonio territory. Just blown coverage by the commander's defense. Just Bow is wide open. And San Diego, couple big plays already to start off their season. But how, how exciting is this? We just, we just get to watch these teams as they grow. It's just, it's just so exciting. First and 10 now from the 35. And they give it to Gardner. He's got a big hole. Jaquan Gardner takes it down to the 27. Sets him up with a second and two. And... So far, the San Antonio defense having a bit of a hard time, which, you know, it's to be expected. This, this defense is a great defense. They've got a lot of star players on it. With your first game, you got nerves, and you also, you haven't played together yet. It's going to take some time for these guys to settle down and it, get into a rhythm. Jaquan Gardner again, big hole. Gardner inside the red zone and almost broke away. Down inside the 15 to the 13. So Gardner breaks with a couple breaks out with a couple big runs and the fleet are in business on their first drive. Gardner. This guy, he is small, but he is he's like a bowling ball. 
the way that he runs downfield, I mean, the leverage he gets being five foot six is incredible. And it's showing so far. All receivers spread right right now for Berkovici. Back to throw, and he's got all sorts of time. He's going to go to the end zone, and that is caught in the back of the end zone. Touchdown, San Diego. Marcus Ball, the tight end, and the fleet march right down and put points on the board. Wow, what a drive from Mike Martz's crew. Bergovici puts that throw on the money. I mean, San Antonio is there to make a play, but it's Ball who comes down with the catch, and honestly, it's really just a perfect throw from Bergovici, so how about that coming out? His first start here in the Alliance, and he was he did an excellent job. And remember, there are no extra points, two-point conversions. It's exciting. Let's see what they decide to do here. Back to throw, Berkovici. End zone again, that's caught. The two-point conversion is good. That's Dantes Ford with the reception. So San Diego comes out and silences this home crowd. 8-0. Mike Riley visibly disappointed with his squad, and I don't blame him. So now San Antonio is going to get ready to come out. Logan Woodside we will get to get a good first look at him. Mike Perkovici, what a, what a drive, and what size is going to have a lot to live up to? Mike Martz, certainly pleased with the way his team played on that opening drive. So, San Diego back to receive, that's Greg Ward, and he'll just take a knee. So here comes Logan Woodside, and it'll be interesting, interesting to see how he performs the uh, former Toledo player, he's got a lot to prove. He's coming into the Alliance, he wants to prove that he can go to the NFL, that he can be a starter. He's got a lot, a lot going through his head right now. First game, then his team's already down 8 nothing before he even gets the football. Let's see how San Antonio can respond. Kenneth Farrell gets the carry, and he's met right away. This defense makes a beautiful play right off the bat. That's Miles Nash. The defensive end, Farrell ends up losing a yard and try to go start with an outside run and I like the call but San Diego just completely reads it. Nash gets there and then Ron Brooks, the cornerback, comes in and finishes him off. So second and 11 coming up now for the Commanders. Right now you, you definitely can feel a little bit of that juice just not there from San Antonio, especially considering this start from San Diego. I don't blame them. On the ground again, it's Farrow, and he's got some room, he sheds a tackler, Kenneth Farrow! First down, and that may be the spark that San Antonio needs to get themselves back in this game. Kenneth Farrow, breaking tackles and picks up a first down. I mean, he sh should have only gotten a couple yards off of that carry, but he gets to the outside, gets away from one, gets away from two, and turns it upfield. That's a big gain of 15 yards for San Antonio. And they needed it. First and 10 now from the 39. And let's see what Mike Riley can do with his offense. Also going to be very interesting to see how these coaches coach in a league that's obviously going to be a lot different than what they've coached in before. Woodside to throw. All sorts of times. Just going to cut to the outside. That's complete. Mikhail McKay is a pickup of about seven. Second and three coming up for the commanders. So... Starting to get into a rhythm offensively, and the crowd is getting back into it. That's exactly what San Antonio needs. I mean, the Alamo Dome is going to be their home. They need this place roaring. They want to get back in. I mean, it's only 8 nothing, but you know. San Diego had a great start. This offense has to respond. And they give it to Farrow, and this time he's met right away. Excellent tackling up front. That's A.J. Tarpley in there. Let's take a look now at this offense. We've got the offensive line again. It's hard to really tell how they're going to perform throughout the season So right now. But Mikhail McKay, Greg Ward Jr., DeMarcus Ayers, they've got some excellent wide receivers. But the running backs, David Cobb, Kenneth Farrow, we've already seen what he can do. He's a beast. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Kenneth Farrow is a one-man wrecking machine. And let's see if they use him here on this big third and two from the 46. Woodside will throw. San Diego brings a blitz. Chucks it across the middle. That's complete. Mikhail McKay stays on his feet. And Mikhail McKay off to the races and inside the 35 to the 32. 
So San Antonio moving things now. Excellently done. So that is the second time now Commander has broken the tackle and gotten a lot of extra yardage. Look at that. He already had enough for the first down, but McKay brings it all the way inside the 35. And this guy, he is going to be so hard to stop. They call him Big Play McKay for a reason. 6'5", 210 pounds. But he's also very speedy. I mean, he's got speed, strength, agility, the hands. What more could you look for in one of your starting wide receivers? First and 10 now from the 32 of San Diego. Woodside will throw again. All day to throw. He's got to get rid of it, though. Pressured, and he's going to go down. The Montre Moore gets the sack. And that's the first first sack of the day for the San Diego Fleet. DeMontre Moore gets it done. And that one is certainly on Woodside. I know his receivers may not have been open, but he had so much time to throw it. At that point, you've just got to throw it away. And Oh, man. I think that's Greg Ward or DeMarcus Akers he's got there at the top who is just wide open. And Woodside doesn't see him. Has to take the sack, and now 2nd and 17 coming up. See if the Commanders can get back into it. After what's looked like a pretty solid drive, it'd be disappointing if they couldn't come away with any points. And they go on the ground to Farrow, and he goes nowhere. 3rd and 16 going to be coming up from the 40. Let's take a look at the San Diego defense on the line. Miles Natch, Andrew Selter, Demontre Moore. These guys are all guys that can absolutely ball. The linebacker position, A.J. Tarpley, Frank Ginda, a couple guys you really want to watch. Demetrius Wright, Ryan Muller, Ron Brooks, excellent players. But Cameron Kelly is someone that I really think is going to be a star in this league. We'll see. But uh, he, he's an excellent safety. Excited to see how he plays. Third and 18 now. They lost a yard on that. I actually I thought that they gained a yard. Third and 18. Big third down. Can the commanders get at least in the field goal range here? Woodside's got to get rid of the football. He'll let it go. That's a quick pass. It's caught. Gets him down to the 33. That's Craig Ward on the reception. So the commander's probably going to have to just attempt the 50-yard field goal with Nick Rose. So the fleet playing solid defense. I mean, they've got the, the commanders have excellent receivers. But San Diego shuts them down. It's a great catch, though, from Greg Ward to at least get them in a field goal range. And I'd assume that's what Mike Riley wants to do with his squad. And it will. 50-yard field goal attempt to get the Commanders their first points of the AAF simulated. The kick is up. And it is just good. Nick Rose is good from 50. I mean, that's a long field goal, especially with your first field goal coming into the season, but he bangs it through. Nick Rose, by an eyelash, gets it through, and it's 8-3. to three. San Diego still has the lead, but the Commanders respond with some points, and that's what they needed. Especially after that solid drive, it would have been a real bummer if they had marched down, but just couldn't come away with any points, so... 8-3 ball game. Anyone's game here in the first quarter with a minute 13 to go. Getting ready for kickoff to the fleet. Rose after the field goal. He'll send it away. Brian Brown back to receive. He had a great return, and I guess he'll take it out again. Why not? And this time he's met right at the 22. Excellent tackling by the commander's defense. So out comes the Fleet's offense, and they smoothly marched down the field on their first drive. I was honestly surprised with how good that they looked offensively. Burke Avicii made some beautiful throws. Let's see what they can do here on the second drive, if they can keep this momentum offensively. On first down, Burke Avicii. Quick throw, and that's dropped. Marcus Ball made the grab in the end zone their last play, but couldn't come up with that one. Let's look at this defense now. Winston Craig, Matthew Godden. Joey Embu on the line. Then you've got Nick Temple, Sean Washington at the linebacker position. Definitely guys that you want to keep an eye on. Devontae Bosby, one of the best, if not the best, cornerback in this league. And then you've got Deron Smith at the safety position, arguably the best safety in the league. So this San Antonio defense is stacked, and it's honestly only a matter of time before they just completely 
start shutting down this fleet offense. At least on paper, that's what they should be doing. Second and ten from the 22. Let's see what their response is after the drop. Off play action. Burger Vici will throw. Deep shot. Wide open. Dantes Ford. Takes it to the 39. Burke Avicii has been very accurate with the football to start this ball game. I mean, he's coming off of play actions and just throwing bullets. And we knew that we had it in him, but you know, first game, it's always a little messy, but excellently done so far from Burke Avicii. So, so far, the commander's defense really has not had an answer for San Diego's offense. And it's really interesting to see what ha continues to happen here. Almost a jump from San Antonio. First and ten, the fleet offense just has San Antonio off balance. And that time, that's Nick Temple getting in there. Gardner goes nowhere. That's a loss of three. And that is the spark maybe the commander's defense needed. Kenneth Farrell gave him a spark on offense. Let's see if the defense can get one now. Gardner gets absolutely pummeled in the backfield. Second and 13 coming up. And now, honestly, this entire game, the fleet really have not had any negative offensive plays. So let's see how they bounce back. After the solid play from the Commanders. Second and 13 coming up as we near the end of the first quarter. Probably will be the last play. No. It goes to the end of the first quarter. 8-3. to three, San Diego has the lead over San Antonio. Hometown Commanders though. Looking pretty solid on defense right now. Let's see if they can get a big stop on this drive. Mike March's squad though with the fleet has looked pretty dang good. Second and 13 now for the fleet. From their own 36. Play action. Berkovici to throw. He's got all the time in the world. He's going to go deep. Just misses his man. Nelson Spruce is wide open. And now the fleet. Third and 13. They have not faced a situation like this all day long. The commander's defense really just been off kilter the entire game. Let's see if they can come up with a big third down stop. And give their offense the ball back. I mean, that first drive, the fleet just marched right down. Jaquan Gardner had a couple excellent runs. Berkovici made a few great throws. Let's see if they can get the job done here on third down. Berkovici to throw out of the shotgun. Plenty of time. Deep across the middle. And he's got a man that's complete. The fleet convert on third and 13. That's Marcus Ball, who had the touchdown catch earlier. And he gets a 30-yard reception there on third and 13. San Antonio's defense is struggling. I mean, again, that's, that is the second or third time today that we've seen Marcus Ball wide open. There's a, uh, someone is missing their, their guy or just there's some miscommunication going on in that defense. I don't know if they're playing some sort of zone that's just messing with their, with their head, with their guys that they're supposed to be covering. But that is a huge error. Now San Diego down to the 34. Off play action. Berkovici is going to throw. Why not? Deep shot. And knocked away. Good coverage that time. That's Deron Smith, the safety, knocking that one away. But the San Antonio defense just needs a big play. They need something. They needed that third and 13 stop to get themselves going. Right now, they've just got to try to hold uh, the fleet to a field goal. Off play action again. Berkovici. Deep shot across the middle, wide open again. Dantes Ford with a big reception inside the red zone to the 13. This San Diego Fleet offense is looking absolutely fantastic. Look at this throw from Berkovici. I mean, you can't really put it in a better spot. I mean, just perfectly in stride. Ford is able to catch it and turn up field. Granted, he gets hit right away, but still. It's a great throw, and... San Antonio just continuing to struggle to get any sort of stop defensively, which is quite surprising when you consider the amount of talent that they have at that squad. First and 10 coming up from the 13, and Mike Martz has got to be very happy with the way his offense has performed early on in this ball game. 8-3 to lead and knocking on the door of some, some more points. 
and they give it to Gardner, and he picks up nothing, gets back to the line. I thought he got about a yard or so, maybe he did, second and nine coming up from the 13. San Antonio, they couldn't get the stop last time when they got into the red zone, let's see if this commander defense can step up and at least keep this a one score game. Berkovici, pump fakes, he's got time, that's caught, Nelson Spruce, but he stood up before the first down, gets him down to the seven, that's a gain of six, big, third and three coming up right now for the fleet, Berkovici, excellent starting, excellent start, I mean, really can't ask for more right now from Berkovici, he's doing his job, and finds a wide open Nelson Spruce, sets him up nicely on third and three, but they don't have a whole lot of room to work with. Let's see what they decide to do here. I could definitely see them going off tackle with Gardner to the right. But we'll see. Third and three. They'll throw. Berkovici, he's got time. He's got to let it go. And he's going to get taken down from behind. Winston Craig. He had a lot of time to throw. Couldn't get it away. And Craig gets there for the sack. San Antonio's defense gets the red zone stop, but they really, really needed it at this point in the game. Berkovici is looking through his progressions. Can't find anyone open, and the wide receivers just stay there. They're not really moving around. Berkovici gets sacked. Definitely would have helped if his wide receivers did something a little bit more than just running their routes. I mean, the offensive line, did not, it's not like they weren't holding up. So, Donnie Hageman coming on now for a 29-yard field goal attempt to make it 11-3. The kick is up, and it's right through. The Fleet have made it 11-3. Hageman knocks through his first field goal attempt of the season. And the Fleet adds three more onto their lead. Once again, they have an eight-point lead. 6.15 to go in the second quarter, and the Commanders get it for the second half. So you think you have a nice long drive here, score a touchdown, tie it up. Then you get the ball for half, you can really take control of the game. So Mike Marshall is going to have to hope that his defense can hold up and keep the Commanders' offense from breaking out. Because once guys like Kenneth Farrell and Mikhail McKay and Woodside all get on the same page, they're going to be very difficult to stop. Demarcus Ayers back to receive for the Commanders, and he will take it out of the end zone. He's got some room to run, but he gets met right at the 24, and that's where he'll go down. Great open field tackling there by Jordan Martin. So the Commanders, with the ball back at the 24, 6-12 to play, and they've got plenty of time to try to tie up this ball game before we head into halftime. Logan Woodside, he made some really nice throws on that opening drive. We'll see if he can get his team into the end zone. First and 10, Kenneth Farrell with the give and a lot of room. Big gain. All the way to the 35, that's a pickup of 11. San Antonio's offense gets a nice chunk of yardage to start off their second drive of the game. Farrow, again, when he hits those holes, he is explosive. And he's surprisingly strong for his size. But San Antonio's offensive line, if they can continue to give Farrell holes like that, they'll be in good shape. First and 10 now from the 35. Woodside will throw on first down. He's going to take a deep shot and way overthrows his man. Looking for DeMarcus Ayers, but that one was not there. He's lucky that he overthrew the San Diego defender as well. Otherwise, that probably would have been a pick. Second and 10 coming up from the 35. I understand taking a shot there, but you just had a good run. Personally, if I was Woodside, I would have just tried to continue to get chunk yarders there and put together a drive rather than go for it all at once. Kenneth Farrow to the outside, and how about Farrow? Another nice gain. Six yards on that one. Brings him to the 41. Big third and four now for the Commanders. Let's see if they can get it done. I mean, at a point like this, it could definitely be a game-changing third down. When you look at the big picture, if San Diego gets the ball back and scores again before half, it's going to start making it a lot more difficult for this offense to get themselves back in the game. 
Third and four. One side to throw. Quick throw. Got his man. That's McKay. First down to the 47. Mikhail McKay gets him another first down. The sticks continue to move. Just simple out route from McKay. And it works to perfection. San Diego's defense playing a little bit more of a zone. And McKay exploits it. First and 10 now from their own 47, practically in the midfield. Still plenty of time to work with for the commander's offense. And on the ground they go with Farrow, and Farrow running guys over. Look at that. Ryan Muller gets blasted. That's a gain of seven to the 46. Second and three coming up, and now... Honestly, now is the time that maybe I would take a shot if I was Logan Woodside. Had a couple nice plays in a row. Now that you've gotten some of that chunk yardage, it's time to shoot deep and get these defenders to play that back a little bit. Woodside, he will go deep, and that's just off the mark. He had air streaking across the middle. Would have been a big gain, but just an inaccurate throw from Logan Woodside. And now third and three coming up. Another big third down now. For the commander's offense, you're out of field goal range, so you've got to try to get this first down to get yourselves into a position to score some points. Look, uh, Woodside will throw. Deep shot down the seam, and it's knocked away. That San Diego defense comes up with a big stop. They're looking for Mikhail McKay. But how about the play from San Diego? And I, I like the call, but... McKay just can't get to the ball in time. Ryan Muller with an excellent hit. He had just gotten struck by Farrow. It's like, all right, it's time for me to make up for it. So San Antonio going to have to pump the ball away now. Fourth and three. Unless they decide to go for it, which would be interesting from Mike Riley. And no, they're not. They will punt it away. Angling to the end zone, and it goes out of the end zone. Not the best punt there. I'm forgetting the name of the San Antonio punter. That's pretty embarrassing. Sorry, fellas. Mike Berkovici coming back out. Look at those stats. 7 for 10, 117 yards and a touchdown. He's played a great game so far for the fleet. And they've got an 11-3 lead. Three timeouts and 314. So they've got, they've got time to score. Jaquan Gardner to the outside. He's got a lot of room. Gardner trying to make a move, and he'll be taken down the 28. That's a pickup of eight on the play. Brings up a second and two. See what the fleet can do on second and two. And honestly, with the way they've been playing, why not take a shot in this position? I understand if they keep it on the ground, but time's already down to close to two and a half minutes. Gardner sheds a tackler, but taken down by Deron Smith. The safety comes in on the blitz, and it pays off. So a big third and one now for San Diego. This, let's see if San Antonio's defense can step up and get a stop here. I mean, San, Antonio, uh, San Diego has scored on every single drive so far. We've hit the two-minute warning. Third and one. 11-3 to three lead for the fleet here in San Antonio. Opening week of the AAF simulated and it's been a good one so far. We've seen offense. We've seen defense Right now the fleet offense up by eight points and they definitely want to score some more third and one Berkovici will throw Cross the middle got a man wide open again is Marcus Ball to the 45 Ball cannot be stopped and it's a big gain Wow, he's got 80 yards and a touchdown on four receptions. The commander's defense just cannot seem to stop this tight end. Wow. What a play. And this offense continues to march down the field. Berkovici will throw again. Deep shot to the sidelines, and that is knocked away. Looking for Brian Brown. That time the defense shoot was there. Second and 10 now from their own 45. 
a minute and a half to go. If you're San Antonio, you've just got to find a way to come together, get this stop, keep it 11 to 3 going into halftime so your offense can regroup, regather, and re come up with another strategy for the second half. To throw again, Berkovici. Lots of time. Sidelines, and he's got a man. That time, Brian Brown is able to make the catch. Berkovici getting close to 150 yards already. And that's Brown's first reception of his Alliance career. First and 10 now from the 41 in San Diego. Just continuing to play an excellent game. First and 10. Down to almost a minute to play. Berkovici. With time, he's got to get rid of it. It's tipped up and caught. How in the world was that caught? That was almost picked off. Brian Brown came back to it and made the reception. That was very dangerous, but how about the play at the line of scrimmage by the defensive lineman? I think that was uh, Arthur Miley got his hands up. Second and 12 now from the 43 of San Antonio. The commanders doing what they can to try to keep the fleet from scoring more points. Berkovici to throw to the sidelines, and what a throw! To the 32, and he gets him out of bounds. That's Brian Brown, third and inches. Honestly, this is a pretty big down, because if you're the fleet, if you don't get it here, you can just settle for three, but if you get it, you do potentially risk running out of time. Sometimes these simulations don't really know how to use their timeout, so... If you're a San Diego fan, you'd probably rather them just not get this and get the three points. The throw is Berkovici. He's got time, and that is almost intercepted! Dangerous throw across the middle. Nick Temple nearly came away with the interception. Wow, look at this. Going for Nelson Spruce and Temple knocks it away. And him and I believe it's Curtis Drummond had a chance at it. So fourth and inches and the fleet. I, I would think that they just go to Donnie Hageman again and let him kick the 49-yarder. But who knows if March wants to keep his offense out there. I, I wouldn't, I would, I would say he probably just kicks the field goal here, and he will. Fourth and inches, 32 yard, uh, 49 yard field goal attempt coming up for Hageman. He was good from 29. Let's see if he can make it. The kick is up, and it's good. 14 to 3 lead for the San Diego Fleet. They've scored on every single drive so far. And if they had more time, they might have been able to score a touchdown on this drive. But excellent kick again. Hageman 2 for 2 already. And the Fleet have an 11-point lead with only 45 seconds left to play. I mean, a little bit of time for Mike Riley to try to come up with something. Berkovici, he's been playing a great game. That last throw, that was that was a dangerous throw. That's, those are the types of throws that he has to shy away from. At least most of the time. I mean, they, they, that was very risky. They almost came up with no points after that. 14 3. Hageman kicks it away. Ayers back to receive. And he should just take a knee, and he will. So the Commanders, 45 seconds to play in the first half. Down by 11. Do you really want to risk something crazy happening, or do you want to just go in to the second half with an 11 point deficit? I mean, ultimately. You have three timeouts, so you can try to get a field goal, I'd say, in this situation. But we'll see. First and ten now from the 25. Woodside to throw. Lots of time, and now he's just going to dump it off. It's Evan Rodriguez, and he can't get out of bounds. They will use a timeout. Stuff like that. Like, this commander's offense definitely looks a little bit flat. I mean, you're trying to get some points before half, and you have a two-yard completion that takes up a timeout. You're better off just throwing it incomplete. Two yards is certainly not worth a timeout. Second and eight now for the 27. Let's see if Mike Riley wants, tries to get Woodside to push it down the field here. Woodside to throw. San Diego brings a blitz. He's got time. He's going to go deep across the middle. Another inaccurate throw from Woodside. He had a man open. Third and eight. This fleet defense is just playing a good game. No other way to put it. I mean, led by guys like A.J. Tarpley, Cameron Kelly. 
Demetrius Wright, and they're they're locking down these receivers. Woodside should have made that throw though. Third and eight. McKay in motion. And they give it to him on the end around, and that's met right away. Cameron Kelly. We were just talking about him. And San Diego uses a timeout, so maybe they'll try to. A little bit interesting there. I mean, sometimes these Madden simulations don't really understand the clock, but San Diego is probably just going to run out the clock with a 14 3 lead. But how about the play? Cameron Kelly was not fooled at all. He read through that one. And again, San Antonio has to pump the ball away. He'll boot it away, and the commander, uh, the fleet. Back to receive, that's Ron Brooks. Takes it up to the 44, so honestly, the fleet do have a chance after that 17-yard return to try to get something going before half. I mean, with a 14-3 lead, it's at the point, why not? To throw is Berkovici. He got a lot of time. Gardner picks up the block. He's got to let it go. He will. Deep across the middle. He's got a man. Marcus Ball. Unbelievable. Makes a move. And Marcus Ball inside the 10 to the 13. This guy is unstoppable. That's unbelievable. Berkovici had so much time to throw the ball. And now the fleet in scoring position again. Probably just kick the field goal here. Marcus Ball has 122 yards, and no, they're gonna try to score a touchdown. They just can't. They gotta either get out of bounds or have an incomplete. Bergevici to throw. Quick throw. That's Gardner, and he's not gonna get there. Wow, what a break for the Commanders as time runs out in this first half. So all of that, Marcus Ball is a huge reception. And they don't get any points out of it. But San Diego has absolutely dominated this first half. I mean, just look at these stats. 14-3 lead. And we'll see what happens in the second half after this. Welcome back to San Antonio. The Commanders. Down 14-3 in the first game of the season for San Antonio and San Diego. The hometown commander is struggling at home, and really it's just because their offense and defense just have not been able to get each other on the same page. San Diego has thrown and run all over the commander's defense. Meanwhile, the commander's offense has just been pretty lackluster overall. They get the ball for the third quarter. They're only down by 11. Quick touchdown, they're right back in this game. Mike Riley's going to have to do something to get his team back in it. Donnie Hageman, he's 2 for 2 on the day, but right now he'll kick it away. Marcus Ayers back to receive, and he'll take it from about the 3-yard line. Nice hold for Ayers, and he'll bring it up to the 36-yard line. So great starting for field position for the Commanders. Maybe that'll give him something to build off of on this drive. Soffin's coming back out, and Mikhail McKay hasn't seen a whole lot of action. Kenneth Farrow. Farrow's had a few really nice runs, but Woodside, he's missed a couple big throws that have put San Antonio into this hole. Let's see how he improves coming out of locker room. First and 10 from the 36. And they'll start with a pitch. Farrow lowers his shoulder, but cannot completely break her way. Finishing him up there, that's Cameron Kelly. Who's already making a statement here in the AAF simulated. Second and ten coming up now from the 36. Commanders, they've got to find something to ultimately take command, as their hashtag says. They've been flat offensively this entire game. Second and ten now from the 36. On the ground again, it's Farrow, and that's Cameron Kelly again. Farrow gets maybe a yard, but Kelly snuffs both of those plays out and now San Antonio already faced with a third and nine. What side he struggled to push the ball down the field. He's got to do it right now. Let's see if he can pull it off. Let's 
backward side to throw. Lots of time. Chucks across the middle. It's dropped. That was a nice throw, and Ayers cannot make the catch. Wow. So Woodside puts it right in between a couple fleet, and Ayers cannot come up with the grab. Look at this again, and he threads the threads the needle. But Demarcus Ayers unable to make the grab, and fourth and nine, and San Antonio is going to punt again. Joseph Zima on the punt, and I apologize for not saying his name the last couple times, but Zima. Zima Zima punts it away. Ron Brooks to return. And he'll be tackled at the 24. So the fleet will get that. Will get possession. Excuse me. At the 24. How about Marcus Ball? This guy's been having a ridiculous performance today. He's got 122 yards. He's got a touchdown. He's been practically catching and running all over the commanders. Seriously, it's just incredible. Let's see if the commanders can... Their defense can step things up, because they, they have not looked very good today at all. First and ten. Berkovici will throw. Quick throw that's caught. Nelson Spruce, first down. The fleet pick up where they left off. Berkovici with 219 yards and a touchdown. We're barely into the third quarter. I mean, this guy is proving that he belongs in the alliance. Nelson Spruce, one of their go-to guys, hasn't seen a whole lot of action today, but he's doing a solid job. Getting the job done when his name is called upon. First and ten now from the 35. And they pitch it to Gardner, who's got some room in. Traquan Gardner makes a move. Gardner makes another move and down to the 40. What a play, and that's a huge gain of about 25 for the fleet. Jaquan Gardner is having himself a day. Look at this. Look at the move he puts on Deron Smith. One of the best safeties in the league. And put them on his put them on his back. It's just the quickness and the agility of Gardner that makes him such an effective back. And San Diego already to San Antonio's 40 yard line. I mean, just look at the difference. 243 total yards. San Antonio's mere 76. And they give it to the fullback. Paul James gets to give, and he'll take it to the 35. So that's a pickup of about five on the play. All of San Diego's offense getting, an evol getting involved right now. And San Antonio, just they just don't have any answers. And time is starting to tick. I mean... San Antonio's got to start making some something happen. Berkovici to throw on second and five. Quick throw that's complete. Dantes Ford. He called him in motion right before calling the snap. And that's another first down for the fleet into field goal range. Dantes Ford also having a good day. I mean, he's had a few catches, had to grab on the two-point conversion, and the fleet are all hands are on deck right now. First and ten. Coming up from San Antonio's 28. Berkovici gives it to Gardner, and this time he's met right away. Winston Craig in the backfield. It's a loss of a yard, and San Antonio's defense really has not done a lot of that. But what a play from Craig. Right now, if you're the commanders, I mean, if you can hold them to a field goal here, that would be a win. I mean, San, San Diego has thrown, run. They've done everything. San Antonio has held them to a field goal the last couple drives. They're going to have to hope that they can do it again here to keep themselves in this ball game. Off play action. Berkovici comes it across the middle. Man, wide open. Nelson Spruce inside the 10 to the 8. Another first down for this fleet offense. They just continue to move the ball. It's incredible. Spruce closed in on 50 yards receiving in his debut. And Mike Berkovici is just throwing all over the place. The fleet. 14-3 lead and now knocking on the door again of adding on to that lead. The commanders just have had no answers. And it's pretty surprising to see San Diego travel to San Antonio and just dominate in this opening game. 
First and goal now from the eight. And on the draw, it's Gardner. He's got a lot of room to run. He'll take it down to the four. If he could have made a move there, I thought he could have gotten to the end zone. But it's a good open field tackle. Second and goal coming up from the four. Let's see what Mike Martz decides to call for his offense that has played a tremendous game. Bergovici gives it to uh, Jaquan Gardner again, and he brings him down to the two. A massive third and goal here. This could decide the game. If San Diego scores another touchdown, there's not a lot of time left for the Commanders. They can hold him to a field goal. San Antonio can get back in the game with just a simple touchdown. Third and goal. What is Mike Martz going to call? Off play action. Berkovici is taken down. Larkin gets him in the backfield. Austin Larkin. That's a big time sack for the Commanders. Pushing them back to the nine. And the Fleet, once again, will have to kick a field goal. Look at this. Larkin just completely reads that one. And Berkovici doesn't even have a second to throw the football. Fourth and goal coming up. Donnie Hageman, he's 2 for 2 on the day. This one just 26 yarder. Should be an easy one. Kick is up, and it's right through. 17 3 lead now for the San Diego Fleet. Hageman's 3 for 3. And San Diego has a commanding 14 point lead over the Commanders. 17-3. There's 2 minutes 11 seconds to play here in the third quarter. So plenty of time for the Commanders to start putting something together. Let's see if they can do it. They've had a couple decent drives, but overall they've been pretty stale. But with, with all the weapons that they have, wouldn't be surprised to see them finally come alive here. Hageman boots it away. Ayers back to receive, and he will take it out of the end zone on the return. Takes it to the 24, and that's where Commanders start with the football. So San Antonio's offense coming back out there, and they have struggled. I mean, Logan Woodside has not had his best day. He's made some bad throws. But then on that last drive, it was Ayers who dropped the first down completion. But look at that. The Fleet have almost 300 yards. San Antonio doesn't even have 100 yet. First and 10 from the 24. Logan Woodside to throw. Quick throw that's knocked away by A.J. Tarpley. Dangerous throw, and Woodside only has 44 yards. We're close to the fourth quarter. Just goes to show how good of a game the San Diego Fleet defense has been playing. Second and 10 now from the 24. Kenneth Farrell gets the carry, tries to make a move, but he's taken down almost immediately. He's had a couple nice runs today, but this second half, San Diego has been all over him. 39, another big third nine for the Commanders. They have been just completely flat in this third quarter. They've got to find some way to pick up this third down conversion and get themselves some points. Third and nine, big blitz from San Diego. Woodside to throw, and that's caught. What a grab. Demarcus Ayers makes up for it. He dropped the last third down, but he goes down low and gets it there in the Commanders with a huge first down. Ayers gets his catch, first catch of the day, and look at this grab. Woodside, not with a good throw, but Ayers gets down and makes one heck of a grab. First and 10 coming up from the 41. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
They've got to get a little bit more urgent. They're still down by 14 points. On the ground is Farrell. He's got room to the outside. Makes a move and gets them to midfield. And that's how we'll go to the fourth quarter. Three down. One more to go in the first game of the AAF simulated for both of these teams. The San Antonio Commanders and the San Diego Fleet. The Fleet are on the road, but they have dominated this entire game. 17-3 lead. Commanders, third and one. This is huge. They need this right now. Woodside the throw. He's got time. To the outside. It's complete. Big reception to Mikhail McKay. And he brings it to the 35 of San Diego. The Commanders moving the football. McKay has 50 yards receiving now. 15-yard reception there, and that's exactly what the Commanders needed to get themselves back into some sort of rhythm here. Another third-down conversion on this drive that moves the chains. And now is the time you've got to go up-tempo. You've got to start pushing the ball down the field quickly and get San, Diego San Diego's defense off balance because San Diego's defense has controlled this entire game. It's about time Sandy, San Antonio lets them know what's up. First and 10 from the 35. Woodside to throw. Quick pass out to Kenneth Farrow. Tries to cut it up field, but tackled almost immediately. That's a gain of about four. Second and six coming up for the Commanders. Time's continuing to run. The Commanders need to be aware of that. They've got to continue to push the ball down the field. Quickly, they cannot let this drive take up a lot of time. And that's a jump. San Diego hands him five yards. That was Miles Nash, who has, has played a good game, but jumps there. Second and one coming up for San Antonio here from the 26, and it almost feels like the spot where San Antonio could take an end zone shot. Second and one, I mean, you need a big play. Now is the time that you try to get it. Second and one from the Fleet's 26. Let's see what Mike Riley dials up for his squad. To throw is Woodside. Blitz gets it off. That's complete. And a nice gain. Evan Rodriguez breaking tackles, and that's a face mask as well. Big gain for San Antonio. That's Eric Pinkins, the tight end. Uh, the linebacker, excuse me. Pushes him all the way down to the four. San Antonio, this offense has really struggled all game long. But they're knocking at the door of some big time points that they need here in the fourth quarter. First and goal from the four. And they give it to Cobb. He gets into the end zone. Touchdown, San Antonio. David Cobb gets the ball, and he scores. The Commanders make it an eight-point game. And look at this push from Cobb. It definitely looks like he's in from that angle. The tackle almost pushes him into the end zone, and San Antonio finally finds the end zone here in the fourth quarter. This crowd has erupted, and now a big two-point conversion here. To make it a six-point game. To throw. Quick throw, and it's dropped. Wide receiver could not turn around in time. That was, I believe, Rodriguez. So it stays an eight-point game, and now San Antonio needs a touchdown and a two to tie it. But that, that was a big drive that they really, really needed. And he has his guy. It's, just, it's tough. In those situations, quick throws, and now San Diego's offense. They've been very, very effective. I mean, they it doesn't look like it when considering they only have 17 points, but they've scored on practically every drive that they had. The only drive that they did not score on was the drive that ended at the three-yard line because it went to halftime. But they've marched the ball down every time. San Antonio's defense has struggled, but we'll see if Mike Bercovici can bounce back here after San Antonio scored a touchdown and put his team back up by two scores. A lot is riding on this drive. And boy, is it exciting. What a game. 17-9, but it certainly has been more exciting than that score. Brian Brown on the return. And it'll be taken down right at the 25-yard line. So he took it out, and 
Would have been the same thing if he just took a knee. First and 10 coming up from the 25. And Mike Marks, his defense has played a good game. His offense has played a great game. But they're only up by one score with still plenty of time for San Antonio to make a comeback. So, still they still have twice the amount of yards. Let's see what they can do. Berkovici in trouble. He'll go down. Devon Smith takes him down all the way to the 15. This commander defense comes up with a huge play on first down. This commander's Alamo Dome is coming alive. Look at this. What a great play call defensively from the commanders. Devon Smith just comes around completely unblocked. Berkovici doesn't even have any time to try to get that throw away. And now all the commanders need to do is just stop Marcus Baugh. And they should be able to force San Diego to punt. Second and 20 from the 15. Let's see what Mike Marks decides to call to try to get his offense in some sort of scoring position. Off play action. Berkovici. He's going deep. Overthrows his man. Looking for Nelson Spruce in third and 20. This San Antonio dome is going wild. My goodness, so much rides on this play, and if you're Mike Marks, do you play it safe? Do you try to get the first down? I mean, this is a tough spot to be in. San Antonio's defense has struggled all game long. This is the best that they've played on a drive. Let's see if they can get it done. Another blitz. He's just got to check it down. That's caught. Marcus Ball, and he doesn't go anywhere. San Antonio's defense steps up and gets the stop that they needed desperately. Zach Sanchez on the tackle. Marcus Ball, 128 yards. Heck of a game, but right now San Antonio has put themselves in a position to make a fourth quarter comeback. Wow. Right when they needed it. Great open field tackling there by Sanchez. Ball is a big guy to take down. Maybe that's why he's been open so much. No one wants to even get close to him. I don't know. Sam Irwin Hill now to punt away his first punt of the game. He'll boot it away. Greg Ward back to receive. And he's got a little bit of room to work with. He'll take it up to the 38. So great starting field position for San Antonio. 6.45 to play. It just, it all feels like the pieces are together for this team to make a comeback. Let's see if the offense can actually pull it off. It'd be disappointing to see them have a three and out right here, especially after the great stop. Let's see what they can do. First and ten from the 38. Woodside to throw. He's got time. Across the middle, he's got a man wide open. That's complete. That's Ayers. Into fleet territory. To the 47. San Antonio. You, you can just sense the momentum switch here in the fourth quarter. They had a great march. Score touchdown. Got a huge defensive three and out. And a big completion to start this drive. And... They are looking pretty solid. See if the commanders can keep it up and put themselves in a position to tie up this ball game. A little over six minutes to play. First and ten. To throw is Woodside. Lots of time. Sideline throw and that's knocked away. That's Cameron Kelly who has been everywhere today. And by everywhere, I mean everywhere. Second and ten from the 47. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised to see Kenneth Farrow get a carry here. These are the situations that guys like him will step up and make a big play. Let's see what Riley decides to do. Woodside will throw to the sidelines, and that's intercepted! Picked off! That's Cameron Kelly! Are you kidding me? This guy is everywhere, and the first interception of the season, the entire season, goes to Cameron Kelly. Wow, and that just completely deflates the San Antonio crowd. Looking for Ayers, and it's just overthrown. I mean, Woodside throws it to Cameron Kelly instead of throwing it to Demarcus Ayers, and Kelly, with the hands, goes up and gets it. And how disappointing is that? For San Antonio, they got the march, then they had the stop, and then they were marching them all down, and, and just a bad throw from one side. That is discouraging, to say the least. Gardner gets met right away. 
great tackle there. That's uh, Matthew Godden on the stop. Second and ten now from the 32. So, I mean, San Antonio is not completely out of it. They still have time, but they've got to come up with a stop here. Again. Off play action. Berkovici will throw. Deep shot. Man wide open. That's complete. Makes a move. Dante's Ford down the sidelines to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, San Diego. 68 yards for Dante's Ford. Wow. So the fleet just continue to pile on the points and unbelievable what a move by Dante's 40 stays in bounds completely angle breaks to Ron Smith and takes it to the house the fleet are rolling in San Antonio look at this just the awareness of Ford to know Smith was coming to make the catch juke him out and take it to the house San Diego can make it a 16-point game here with this two-point conversion. And Logan Woodside, I mean, that's just tough. He was marching his team back down the field. He throws an interception. And two plays later, San Diego scores a big-time touchdown. 23-9. Two-point conversion attempt for Berkovici. That is caught, and it's good. Marcus Ball, he had a touchdown. Why not have a two-point conversion? I mean, this guy has had one heck of a game. And San Diego makes it 25-9. to the, the commanders just can't find a way to get it done today. Still some time on the clock, but to score 16 points in about five minutes, I don't know. But the way the commander's offense has looked, it's definitely not... Not looking like it's possible. The interesting thing, though, is that in week three, these teams will play again. So, this time in San Diego. So, we'll see if San Antonio can come out more prepared for that one. Donnie Hageman to send it away. DeMarcus Ayers on the return. Sheds a tackler, takes it up to the 31. So, good starting field position here for San Antonio. They need two touchdowns and two two-point conversions. Still have all three timeouts, but they need a quick score. I mean, it's going to be hard. Logan Woodside, not the greatest debut. He's missed some throws, and that last one was com just really, really bad. First and 10 now from the 31. Woodside to throw. He's got a lot of time. Now he just guns into the outside. That's caught. Gets out of bounds. It's Farrow, but it's only a gain of about three. The commanders need a lot more than that. Second and seven coming up from the 34. See if this commander office can get it going again or if they're just going to fall flat. Second and seven. Deep shot. He's got a man and it's knocked away and almost intercepted again. Looking for Greg Ward, but it's Knocked away. Third and seven. This fleet defense has really played one heck of a game. I I'm really, really impressed with how well that they've played. Third and seven. Can the commanders get a big third first down? Woodside, a lot of time. Quick underneath and Farrell gets the first down to the 42. Kenneth Farrow. Has not gotten a lot of involvement, especially in the second half. He's been shut down, but what a catch. And then the move, not even the move. He just bulldozed over A.J. Tarpley. Picks up the first down. First and 10 now from the 42, but not a lot of time for San Antonio to work with. First and 10. Woodside to throw. He's got a lot of time. Deep across the middle, he's got a man that's complete. To the 36 of San Diego, DeMarcus Ayers again. He's been a go-to guy for Woodside across the middle. 
Under four minutes to play, though. San Antonio's got to start moving the football quicker than this. Dude, they've, just, they've got to score a touchdown now. They cannot afford to let the clock. They've got to score at least before the two-minute warning. See if they can pull it off. To the 36. Woodside coming off the interception. He's made a couple nice throws on this drive. Let's see if he can continue to push it down the field for San Antonio. The throw is Woodside. To the sidelines is caught. And a flag. Let's see what this is. It's a face mask. AJ Tarpley with the face mask. And that pushes San Antonio down to the 11. So they needed something like that to happen. And they get it. Down 25-9, 3.23 to play, but the Commanders, not completely out of out of it yet. I mean, down to the 11, let's see what they do. I don't want to see them run the football here, to be honest. They will run it. Kenneth Farrow, maybe I was wrong. Farrow takes it in. Touchdown, San Antonio. Wow. Well, what do I know? Mike Riley with a beautiful play call, and Kenneth Farrow finds the end zone for San Antonio. Their second touchdown of the fourth quarter the commander's offense it's a shame they just couldn't have done this the last drive but hey they're keeping themselves in it and now a lot riding on this two point conversion but Kenneth Farrow gets his first alliance touchdown this commander's crowd is back into it 25-15 they've got to find a way to convert right here what side will throw and he's going to be taken down Luterelli gets him in the backfield. Wow. That is very disappointing for San uh, for San Antonio. They get they get the big drive, they march down, and now they're gonna need to stop they need to score twice, and their failure to score on both two point conversions has really hurt because San Diego's been two for two. Meanwhile, San Antonio has been 0 for 2, and that hurts. It could be 25-19, but instead it's 25-15, and that is very, very disappointing for Mike Riley's squad. It honestly, just kind of takes takes the air out of the room for San Antonio's defense that is going to have to try to come up with a two stops now instead of just one with only 3:20 to play. I mean, and they're going to try an onside, the onsides thing. What in the world? I think that, uh, the modification had some sort of weird glitch there. Because, uh, the 4th and 15 option was not integrated into this because it was too hard, but I don't know what that was. Failed onside kick. I guess. Jaquan Gardner takes it, and Winston Craig takes him down to 39, but Sa uh, San Diego in position to score. I'm surprised that they even tried an onside kick there. Second and six from the 39. The Fleet, they have controlled this game. Second and six. Gardner again, taken down by Washington, the linebacker. And now San Antonio uses a timeout. Big third and five. The game rides on this. Because San Antonio needs to stop, they need a quick score, and then they need to get an onside kick somehow. I still don't understand why they didn't... I mean, third and five, but Donnie Hageman can kick a field goal from here, so... Huh. Interesting to see how this all plays out. Third and five. Berkovici to throw. To the sidelines, and that's caught. Brian Brown. Mike Berkovici has been absolutely outstanding today. Brown picks up the first down, and San Diego moves the sticks. What a throw. What a route from Brown. Just getting open. That's Devontae Bowlesby. Can't get the job done, and San Diego can practically just run out the clock. I mean, San Antonio will get the ball back, but not with a whole lot of time. 
Nelson Spruce in motion. Gardner to the outside. He's got some room to run. Takes it inside the red zone to the 19, and San Antonio has to use their second timeout. On paper, San Diego has won this game. Really just no other way of putting it. What a performance from Mike March and his squad. Offensively, defensively, I mean, I know San Antonio scored a couple touchdowns this quarter, but the interception from Cameron Kelly, just the, the fact that they shut them down to three points until the fourth quarter is it's incredible. And it's a testament that San Diego is here to stay in the AF East. What a move from Gardner. Picks up another first down. San Antonio has to use their last timeout. But the Fleet with a 25-15 lead here on the opening week of the AAF simulated. What a game. It was exciting. All the way to the end. Some big plays on both sides, but it was the Fleet that had more big plays, especially offensively, and that's what won them this game. First and 10 from the 15. Berkovici's going to throw. He's going to go to the end zone, and that's knocked away. My goodness. He's had a great day, but what is he doing? That Honestly, that should have been picked off. And that would have shot San Antonio right back into this ball game. Wow. Second and 10 now from the 15. Juan Gardner gets the carry. He's got some room. Close to a first down. Third and inches coming up as we come down the two-minute warning. So, if San Antonio can stop them here to a field goal, they will get a chance with the ball back. Probably not going to do much, but still. It's another opportunity with the football. I'm surprised with the play call to throw it. Mike Marks is not afraid, but Bergevici is lucky that one didn't get intercepted. Third and inches. Bergovici will throw. To the end zone. Caught. Touchdown. Jaquan Gardner. Wow. So the fleet add on another touchdown here in the, set in the fourth quarter. And they have stretched their lead to 16. Two-point conversion definitely puts this one away. But Gardner didn't find the engine on the ground, but he finds it through the air, and he's had a great day, and that just caps off a fantastic performance from him. And Mike Berkovici has now thrown three touchdowns. What a debut for him here in the Alliance. I am very impressed. Two-point conversion attempt now. 31-15 lead. For San Diego. They've been two for two. Can they get another one here? The throw is Berkovici. Quick throw. That is caught. Dante's forward with his second two-point conversion of the day. San Diego, 33-15. to 15. Just what a disappointing day for the Commanders. Wow. San Diego has scored two touchdowns now here in this fourth quarter after they scored a touchdown on their first drive they were held to a few field goals but what a performance from this offense I mean they've been just unstoppable so San Antonio now down by three scores a minute 56 this game is in all practicality it's over Donnie Hageman three for three on the day Kicks this one away. He's had a great performance as well. I mean, just all around. Excellently done from the fleet. And Marcus Ayers on the return. Takes it to 27. So the San Diego fleet primed to start the season 1-0. Meanwhile, the commanders, they're going to have to figure it out. Because they are traveling. Or actually, no, they're going to be home facing off against Orlando next week and Orlando's coming off a 30 to 9 win against Atlanta. San Antonio is going to have a big mess on their hands going up against that team. Woodside to throw on first down. Deep across the middle has caught the Marcus Ayers to the 50. San Antonio is still trying to just, I mean might as well try to get your offense into some sort of rhythm 
even though this game is practically over, you might as well push the ball down the field, find out what you can do. I mean, you're playing in San Diego again in just two weeks. I mean, they play again in week three, so chance for redemption in just a couple weeks. Woodside the throw. Deep shot to the sidelines, and he's got Mikhail McKay to the 28. So San Antonio, Woodside up over 200 yards now, and the commanders moving the football, and you wonder, where, where have plays like this been all game long? <coughs> Big play McKay. Beautiful catch. But overall, Demetrius Wright has done a pretty solid job out there in coverage. First and ten from the 28. Woodside will throw it again. Across the middle, that's complete. Rodriguez, the tight end. Brings it down to the 21. See, last chance for San Antonio to get some more points on the board. As we're getting close to the final minute of this ball game. Down to a minute left. Second and three for the Commanders. Woodside will throw again. Quick shot to the outside that's complete. He's almost got the angle. Ayers down to the seven. But the time continues to run as he could knock it out of bounds. First and goal coming up from the seven. Ayers getting close to 100 yards receiving on the day. Cameron Kelly's got another tackle. First and goal from the seven coming up and see if San Antonio can at least find the end zone. Here with 30 seconds left in the game. Woodside will throw. He's got a lot of time to the end zone and that's out of bounds for Rodriguez the 10 end. Second and goal coming up for the Commanders. I do like when teams do this. I mean, why not try to score at the end of games? It'll give your offense more confidence, especially, I mean, this is the first game. These guys have a lot to learn throughout the course of the next nine weeks. Second and goal from the seven. Woodside to throw again. To the end zone, and that is caught. Touchdown, Commanders. Woodside. Will at least get a touchdown. That's Mikhail McKay. Big play. McKay finds the end zone. And San Antonio scores another touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a catch from McKay. That throw from Woodside was definitely behind him. But Woodside at least redeems himself somewhat. Gets him a touchdown. San Antonio on for the two-point conversion. If they had more time, they could get back into this one. But it's... In, in all practicality, this game is over. To throw is Woodside. He's got lots of time. All the time in the world, and now he's going to go down. So they don't get it. That's Stelter who gets in there to sack him, but Woodside, he's got to get rid of that football. He's got to do a better job of getting that ball away, that's for sure. So San Antonio, I'm sure will try an onside kick, but it's not like it's really going to matter too much. Down by 12 with only 20 seconds to play. What a game from this fleet team. Just overall, put us up at 31 points. Yes, San Antonio scored 18 points here in the fourth quarter, and what a shame that they couldn't get any. Two conversions, and now this thing, I, I don't really know what's going on here. What in the world? What the heck? He's just going to go to the end zone? That's another touchdown for San Antonio. And uh, I got to kind of find out what in the world is going on with his modification because this has not happened before. He just picked it up and ran to the end zone and no one tackled him. So, well, looks like I, I probably won't count this touchdown in the final score because... Uh, what happens if this happens again? Oh no. Woodside goes down. I uh I hope this does not happen again. Because then technically San Antonio would win this game. 
what in the world am I supposed to do with this? Nash gets to him on there, but, uh... I, I know that this is kind of weird and shouldn't be happening, but it's difficult to uh, modify a video game, that's for sure. I'm just praying that this does not happen, please. Just let San Diego come away with a win, please. Please, please. I'm going to have to talk to the, uh, the mod team and try to get this sorted out. Because, uh... This is wild stuff. Oh, I just hope and pray that this is a normal kickoff. Oh, no. Ugh. No! Tackle him, please! What in the world? What in the heck? San Antonio can technically win this game, and now my end screen is going to be completely messed up because of this. You gotta be kidding me. Uh, the commanders, uh, this game is, I think, gonna have to get scratched. What a shame. This was such a good game. San Diego won this game. Well, I'm probably not gonna scratch this game. I'm just gonna kinda modify it. San Diego won this game, guys. I cannot let San Antonio win this. They... I'm gonna have to find a way to get this onside kick thing fixed. But, yeah, I mean, I, I can't... It's, that's so unfair. I apologize for this, and hopefully this doesn't happen again. I'm going to have to talk to the mod team and try to get this sorted out. Now we get a normal kick. And uh, this will finally end this one. Watch him return this for a touchdown now. <laughs> and, well... That'll do it for us here from San Antonio. The San Diego Fleet come away with a huge win at home. Uh, on the road. I'm getting all mixed up now. 33-21. The Fleet come away with a win. San Antonio comes up short. They just really couldn't get their offense going until the fourth quarter. A crushing interception from Woodside led to a huge play for Dante's Ford and the San Diego Fleet. So the Commanders dropped to 0-1 in the season while the San Diego Fleet... Rise to 1-0. and And I'm going to have to edit that thing there. That was so strange. <laughs> well, guys, I apologize for this weird ending. San Diego won this game, and for all the U Commanders fans, I'm sure you can understand why San Diego will ultimately get this win. Um, yeah. That pretty much ends it for us here at the AAF Simulated. Thank you guys for watching. Go follow us on Twitter. I'll keep you updated on what goes on with the modification. I'm not even going to play another game until I know this is fixed. So I won't be doing Birmingham and Memphis and Salt Lake and Arizona until I know this won't happen again. So thank you guys, and I apologize for this. And um, this feels really weird to ask, but I did just set up a little PayPal link. Uh, which is down the link below if you guys would like to support us. I mean, we're doing a lot of work on this thing to make it as good as possible. And if you enjoy the content, we would really appreciate if you guys just send a few bucks our way. If not, just continue supporting from watching. We love you for that as well. So thank you guys for watching. Take care. Hope you have a great